Joining us on the line is Governor Greg Abbott, 48th governor of the state of Texas. Governor Abbott, thanks so much for joining the show. Really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Great to visit with you again. So why don't we talk for a minute about what the actual status is of the stay-at-home orders in, in Texas? Obviously, you never shut down the state statewide. You got an awful lot of flack for that. What's sort of the timeline here as to the measures taken by the state of Texas in response to COVID-19? Well, first, as you pointed out, uh, we never really shut it down because we left open what are called essential services, and that includes so many categories beyond just doctors and nurses. It included uh, construction workers, manufacturing, uh, home builders, uh, real estate agents. There, there were so many categories of businesses that were open. We never really shut down like so many other states did. That said, we did have a stay-at-home policy that is set to expire on April the 30th, so uh, here in just a couple of days. And uh, uh, after April 30th, beginning May 1st, we are beginning to open Texas up even more for doing business. We're opening up things like uh, restaurants, all the, the entire retail sector, uh, including malls. And we're opening uh, things like movie theaters and museums and churches, et cetera. Churches, by the way, were included uh, as an essential service category during the essential services time period. So they also were never shut down. But we are making sure they have more latitude to have more capacity in churches beginning this Sunday. So, Governor Abbott, what kind of restrictions are in place for the retail sector, for all of the businesses that are reopening, and in terms of crowd sizes at places like churches? Well, here's the deal. <clears throat> Obviously, if we were to uh, open everything up uh, all the way, uh, it could lead to uh, massive crowds without the type of distancing practices that really are needed because Here's the deal that the coronavirus has never left the state of Texas. It still exists here just as it exists across the United States, just as it, as it exists across the world. And so uh, until we have these therapeutic drugs come along, we, we are going to have to still engage in, in very smart practices to make sure that we don't promote uh, a flare up in the spread of COVID-19. And as a result, we want to take this uh, on a multi-phase strategy. It's kind of like along the lines of what some people have seen the president talk about a phase in process. And the way that we are do, doing our phase in is that for phase one, which begins on May 1 and lasts until the middle part of May before we hope phase two will begin. But for phase one, uh, the, the capacity for restaurants, for, for retail, uh, for all these different types of entities that are being open is 25% capacity. Now, uh, is is that you know, full bore, wide open business? No, but it's, it's, it's decisions based upon the data that we have and also the best advice from uh, an outstanding medical team that is advising us on safe ways that we can go about reopening the economy. If we can open it up 25% for a two week time period and see no spread in the coronavirus and, and show that we are able to continue to control the spread, then our goal is to then take the next step and that is to open it up to 50% of capacity and see how that goes and make sure we continue to monitor it. And hopefully uh, we will be able to continue to contain the spread of COVID-19 and hence be able to open it up even more. One last thing real quick, and that is that we've seen this strategy work. This isn't just like pulled out of thin air. The strategy is a strategy that has been utilized very effectively by the largest food chain in uh, a grocery store chain in Texas, it's called HEB, uh, and then also used uh, by hardware companies like Home Depot. Uh, and, and what they've been operating under is pretty much a 25% capacity. And we've shown that through distancing strategies, et cetera, through that capacity strategy, we've been able to allow people to go shopping, allow stores to be open, while also containing the spread of COVID-19. Uh, Governor Abbott, what sort of local differentiation is there inside the state of Texas? Obviously, the state of Texas is absolutely enormous. There's a vast difference between the population centers of Dallas and Houston and Austin and rural Texas, uh, eastern Texas. So w- what exactly are the are the latitudes that are given to local leaders to determine exactly what level of opening is necessary? No, g- great question, because <clears throat> as you point out, and some of your listeners know, some who don't know, and that is that you know, Texas obviously is a very large state. We have a total of 254 counties, and in almost half of those counties, there have either been zero cases of COVID or five or fewer cases of COVID. And so we 
concluded that obviously uh, if you're in a county that has five or fewer cases of COVID, that's a complete different situation than the transmission rate that we've seen in places like Houston and Dallas. And as a result, those smaller counties that are not affected as much by COVID, they shouldn't be punished uh, just because there are greater challenges in other parts of the state. And so we are allowing them to open up even more. We are allowing them to open up at this time at 50% capacity. The reason why it's is, is not more than that is that there have been some rural counties in Texas, especially if you were to look in the panhandle, for example, where there has been an outbreak of COVID uh, in some of our smaller counties. In fact, some of the fastest uh, growth rates of COVID spread is in some of the smaller counties in the panhandle. The point is that uh, it doesn't matter if you're a large or small county. Even if you're a small county, you can have fast COVID spread, and it's something we need to stay on top of. However, if, if you're a small county and you have zero or few cases, uh, we want you to be able to, to try to uh, re-energize the economy in your county and open things up at least 50%, giving us the latitude to be able to constrain COVID-19 in the small counties. Uh, Governor Abbott, there's been a lot of focus nationally on testing and tracing capacity. Obviously, testing and tracing is really designed to tamp down hotspots and prevent the overwhelming of the healthcare system. Texas was never really in danger of having its healthcare system overwhelmed. What sort of testing and tracing capacity are you aiming for in Texas? And how does that stack up with, with the timeline? Well, like you're talking about, uh, because Texas has had fewer hotspots than so many other places, Texas has never been uh, like New York or uh, like uh, New Jersey or like Louisiana or like Chicago or Detroit, et cetera. And as a result, uh, Texas has uh, one of the lowest death rates you know, in the United States. And it's uh, death rate per person tested positive, death rate per capita, et cetera. Uh, and uh, as, as a result, uh, we're, we're wrapping up well over 300,000 tests made. Uh, but we are wrapping up even more as we begin this phase in process of opening a business. And we have a team of uh, really good doctors, uh, doctors who are in charge of uh, testing and tracing at the University of Texas healthcare system, uh, a former uh, FDA head and former head of U.S. Medicaid and Medicare who is advising us on this. And so we have robust strategies to be able to test and trace and make sure that we will be able to identify any type of hot spots as, as they arise and be able to contain it. And let me emphasize this, because people need to understand that as Texas or whatever state you may be in, uh, as states begin to open up, there is going to be an increase in a couple of things. Uh, there will be an increase in testing. There will be an increase in the number, number of people testing positive. It just kind of goes with the territory. What we are all working to achieve is to make sure that uh, this not this does not uh, get out of control. So the, the real metrics that we are looking at that everybody needs to focus on is hospitalization rates and death rates. The, the fact of the matter is, uh, if you have a low death rate like Texas, if you have low hospitalization rates with uh, a large capacity for hospitals to take care of people, you're really not very much in a danger zone. And so we, uh, during this time period that uh, we have had this, stay-at-home policy with essential services being open, uh, we had an overabundance of hospital beds, of uh, ICU units, of, of ventilators. We never came close uh, to, needing, to needing to utilize uh, all of the resources that we had available to us. And as a result, one of the most important things that we have done is to uh, reauthorize uh, doctors and nurse, nurses and dentists and our healthcare professionals uh, to get back into the game because uh, the, the the need to set aside resources for COVID-19 patients uh, is simply not there. But the, the need for fellow Texans to be treated for cancer, to be tr treated for heart disease, to be treated for uh, other kinds of health care issues that persist day after day, those folks, they need to get in and see a doctor. They need to be treated, and now they're going to be able to. It's been Governor Greg Abbott of the state of Texas. So, Governor Abbott, obviously, we've seen the, the media differentially treat Republican governors than Democratic governors. You've seen Brian Kemp in Georgia raked over the coals. You've been raked over the coals. Ron DeSantis in Florida has been raked over the coals. Meanwhile, Jared Polis in Colorado, who's a Democrat and is planning on reopening his economy in ways that are very similar to Texas, has basically been left alone by the media. To what do you, attri do you attribute this, this obvious disparity? Well, uh, who, who knows? Uh, it, it, it could be the angle that the media wants to take or... 
Uh, I have I have no idea. All I all I can say is uh, all that matters to me uh, is that we're going to be able to open up our economy uh, as swiftly and effectively as possible uh, while keeping our fellow Texans safe. And I think we can do that. So, Governor Abbott, well, a final question for you here. When when you look at you know, the federal response to all of this, you're a governor who's been interacting regularly with the federal government. Uh, we, we've been hearing from governors across the aisle that the federal government response has actually been quite forthcoming about all of this. Nonetheless, the, the media coverage has been all about supposed giant federal failures. How do you evaluate the, the federal government's response in terms of what you needed in your state? So let me give your listeners uh, a kind of a window into the way this really works. Uh, right before getting on the phone with you, I was just on a phone call with the vice president as well as the secretary of, of ag uh, talking about uh, making sure we keep our food chains open uh, and our food supplies available and uh, keeping uh, our food supplies safe. My point is that uh, that's the second time this week uh, that we've been on the phone with either the, the president or the vice president. Uh, we're on the phone typically twice a week uh, with the president and with uh, people like Dr. Burks. And before I rolled my plan out, I had the opportunity to both visit with Dr. Burks about it, uh, the senator to talk to the president about it. Uh, the president said that he strongly endorses it and supports it. Dr. Burks uh, had a chance to look at it and, and sent an email back saying this is a great plan. Uh, the state of Texas has. My, my point is this, and that is we are talking uh, to the White House staff on almost a 24-7 uh, basis. And so they've been very uh, uh, approachable, very available, very helpful. And this has been a true team effort. And we appreciate everything that they have done to help the great state of Texas. And it's been a great partnership. And, and like you pointed out, uh, we've seen that uh, as a statement uh, in a bipartisan way. Governors of both Republican and, and Democrat states uh, have appreciated the all-in effort by the federal government to help the entire country respond to this. Well, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, really appreciate your time, and thank you for your leadership, sir. Stay, stay, stay safe out there. we Will do. All the best to you all. God bless America. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our future content.